There's a soldier and there's a minor worker. The start was, I was just really fascinated, actually like Darwin, how you can get such dramatically different looking workers in a single colony. I had no possible idea that it, the answer would have been in the wing rudiments. There is no way I could have guessed that. Ahab Abuhev teaches biology at McGill. He's been researching the wings of ants for almost 25 years. He got interested in ants because of Charles Darwin. Darwin was fascinated by ants and he had dedicated several pages in The Origin of Species to ants. Most of the time he was perplexed. He just really couldn't understand how when he looked in a single colony, he would find ants that are dramatically, you know, the workers in these colonies, they're dramatically different from one another. In fact, sometimes several, you know, several fold, like so you find ants with massive heads that we call soldiers and normal looking workers with, you know, small heads and, and bodies. And to Darwin, it was really puzzling because he thought, well, if natural selection works on the level of the individual fighting for survival and reproduction, how is it that they could have such differently looking individuals in a single colony. It seems that the answer is to be found in an organ called a rudimentary wing disc. Only the queen and the male ants have wings. None of the workers do. But Abu Haif and his students observed that in some of the worker ants, a rudimentary wing disc that was thought to be simply a useless remnant of evolution appears at a particular stage in their development. In the process of looking into it more closely, the researchers made a big discovery. In the workers, these wing discs that, uh, that are fully functional in the queens and males are rudimentary, which means that they um, appear and disappear. And it's interesting because they only appear, what we noticed in early on in, 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 in the lab, is that they appear and disappear only in certain individuals. And those individuals are the big headed soldiers. What we know is that from you know, previous work that had been done, that essentially what triggers a soldier to be a soldier is the amount of nutrition it gets, the levels of hormone um, uh, that uh, are released. Those are all things that trigger the soldier program. And so it must be that there's something about the nutrition and the, and the hormones that are triggering this rudiment to pop up and, and then disappear. The amazing thing is that we always thought it was a consequence, some kind of, um, you know, useless organ that would just pop up and disappear as a consequence of these hormones and, and this nutrition. What we discovered is that these rudimentary organs are not a consequence of development and in response to the hormones and food, but are in fact a cause. And they're the things that are triggering the generation of these soldiers by sending out signals that regulate head and, and, and the body to actually grow at really rapid rates until you get these big-headed soldiers with these big mandibles and big bodies. The researchers discovered the process that generates the development of soldier ants in the Phytale genus. They also found out that soldier ants control the proportion of larvae that will eventually become soldiers. The big surprise is that the soldiers, the way they've evolved the capacity to regulate the number of minor workers to soldiers is that they emit a soldier pheromone or an inhibitory pheromone that stops the growth of this rudimentary organ when there are too many soldiers. And by doing that, they keep the balance of soldiers at 5% and the minor workers at 95%. So this is really uh, the ants in action. The soldier ants are actually sitting on top of the, of the future, you know, the eggs and the larvae. And by doing that, the inhibitory pheromone that they secrete actually goes onto these larvae. And if there are enough soldiers, then there'll be enough inhibitory pheromone that will stop them from becoming soldiers. The larvae are somehow able to sense the inhibitory pheromone. They're the ones who are reading the amount of inhibitory pheromone. And by doing that, they'll know how many soldiers there are. And then they react by either uh, developing into to soldiers or not. In the end, it turns out that an organ that had been assumed to be simply a useless holdover from an earlier stage in evolution actually has a pretty big role to play in ant colonies. The, the traditional way of thinking about rudimentary organs is that they had no function or at most minor functions. 
And so to find that these rudimentary organs generate the soldiers and even balance the proportion of soldiers to minor workers in a single colony, to have such a major regulatory role during development and even evolution is kind of turning all of our theories on, on their head and giving a whole new perspective to, you know, to these class of, this class of biology that has remained underappreciated for the last 100 years. Because now we hope that essentially you'll go, that scientists will now ask what these rudimentary organs are doing and by doing so, who knows what they'll discover.